Hello everyone, Dimple here welcoming you all to today's session on SLinux labeling. So let's get started. What is this SLinux labeling? Uh, so, um, in SC Linux, all the files, directories, devices, processes, they have a security context, which is nothing but a label associated with them. So, every file, every uh, process, device, that is the hardware devices and directory, everything will have a label associated with them. So, on systems running SC Linux, all processes and files are labeled in a way that represents security relevant information. So these labels, whatever these labels are assigned to files, they represent security relevant information. And this information is called as security context. So for example, here if I run this command ls-z and this is the name of the file, file1. So we get to know which user, which group, what is the user and what is the role, what is the type of the file and what is the level of the file. So uh, this is the standard format in which the SC Linux uh, labeling is done. Um, so um, user, user is nothing but this one unconfined underscore u. Whatever uh, is labeled here, this is the user and this is the role, okay? Role assigned to that particular user and there will be a type. So your type is user home underscore t, which is nothing but the type of the file and the level, the security level, okay? Which is here uh, called SO. So this information is used to make access control decisions. So let's see more about uh, SC Linux context. So this context contains additional information about a system object. Okay, SC Linux user, their role, their type, and the security level. So the labeling is divided into four parts. As you all can see here, user, role, type, and level. SC Linux uses this context information to control access by processes Linux users and files. So this particular SC Linux labeling will uh, decide who can access what type of file, who has access or who do not have access to uh, reach or uh, modify a particular file or directory or any process in the Linux system. So let's see about uh, user. So SC Linux user account uh, complements a regular Linux user account. SC Linux maps every Linux user to an SC Linux user identity that is used in the SC Linux context for the processes in a user session. Okay. So that's about the SC Linux uh, user, which is the first part in the labeling. So next we'll see about the role. So role comes uh, as the second part of the labeling after a semicolon. So in the role based access control security model, role acts as an intermediary abstraction layer between the process domains or a file type and an SE Linux user. So role is acting like a bridge between the user as well as the type of the file. Okay, so uh, this you understood it easier way. Okay, so role is acting like a bridge between the user as well as the type of the file. With who, who is the user and what type of file they are trying to access. That defines the role of that particular user. So um, processes run in specific SC Linux domains and file system objects are assigned to SC Linux file types. Right. So SC Linux users are authorized to perform specified roles and roles are authorized for a specific domains and file type. So for every type of the file, for every domain, domain is nothing but the process. For every process, for every type of the file, a role will be assigned who will uh, define who can access which file and what type of file. A user's role determines which process, domains, and file types he or she can access, and hence which process and files he or she can access. That's simple. So let's move on. 
next we'll see about the type so type will come after the role and it's the third level of labeling a type defines an se linux file type or an se linux process domain processes are separated from each other by running in their own domains so type is very easy to understand it's the type of the file okay so uh, this type will prevent processes from accessing files that other processes use and prevents processes from accessing other processes like process run in their own domains right interchange between the process is prevented using this type labeling and se linux policy rules define the access that process domains have to uh, file types and other process domains right so that was about the type labeling and let's move on to level so level is the last uh, part of the se linux labeling so level is nothing but it's an attribute of multi level security and multi category security so mls stands for multi level security and mcs stands for multi category security mls range is a pair of sensitive levels written as low level high level okay so in this multi level security system this level we just uh, name it as low level high level the range can also be abbreviated as low level if the levels are identical for example s0 is the same as s0 s0 so s we denote level in the form of an s okay so s0 each level has an option set to secure set of security categories to which it applies so each level has an option if the set is contiguous it can be abbreviated for example s0 colon c uh, c not c0 dot c3 that means instead of writing it um, three different times i mean s0 which is applicable to c0 c1 c2 c3 files we can just give dot from c0 to c3 it applies to the all the files it's like this okay uh, so we saw the format of se linux labeling there are user role type and level each one is separated by a colon and so let's move on all these uh, se linux uh, labeling will be done for every file for every directory every process every hardware in the linux system but how do we actually access those for example i have a set of uh, labeling done for a few files how will i actually access that particular file for that we need to write our own policies so we write policies these policies help us in accessing these se linux file system through the labeling okay so in order to access every file or every directory or every process we need to write a set of our own policies and these policies will go check here if i have the correct access uh, rights for accessing the correct type of file it will check all the access denials or if i have access and then it will give me access to that particular file so that i can modify or i can delete i can do anything with that particular file so uh, just understand this much there are se linux labeling which i showed you in the previous slides in that particular format labeling will be done for every file every directory every process in the linux system and in order to access these files we need to write our policies which will help us to access these particular files okay so let's see what is se linux policy This SE Linux policy is a set of rules that guide the SE Linux security engine. It defines the type for file objects and domains for processes. So for every file there will be that file will be defined by its type, okay? And for every process it will be defined by the domain. 
this domain is nothing but it's like a type how we uh, call every file by its type we call every process by its domain so these policies can be as strict or as lenient as you require it depends on you how you define these policies it uses uh, roles to limit the domains that can be entered and has user identities to specify the roles that can be attained in essence types and domains are equivalent as i told you for files type will be applicable for processes domains will be applicable the difference being that types apply to objects while domain apply to processes so policies are a set of rules governing things such as roles a user has access to which roles can enter which domains and which domains can access which types so um, which user can access a particular domain and which domain can access which type these will be defined by policy you can edit your policy files according to how you want your system set up and the purpose of se linux is to enforce policies so policies form the core of se linux the default policy is to deny everything and every operation has to be explicitly permitted in a policy file also a uh, policies can also control what programs can do and how programs can interact with each other such as controlling the accessing of the files programs tracing each other and sending signals okay so it basically tells um how um control uh, it basically tells how the programs can be controlled by interacting with each other so here again i'm just expanding the purpose of se linux policies policies allow you uh, the flexibility to configure your system as you wish okay you may choose to have user a access both user r and system admin r roles and have user b access the user r role only okay you can define which user can access which particular files or roles for example with regard to accessing files you can have a policy for files created under the temp folder okay so that one domain creates them but another domain cannot access them i hope you understood the purpose of se linux policy uh, let's see what is the uh, format of writing this policy we saw the format for labeling se linux labeling similarly we have a format for se linux policies too so policy rule comes in the form of allow space domains and the types okay domain types and the permissions so what are the permissions to access which type of files this is here is an example uh, allow app domain this is the domain name and the type of the file is user data file okay and the permissions i have is file read file permissions so allow is a keyword after allow we specify the domain okay domain is nothing but uh, uh, the space where the process will run and we define the type of the file followed by what are the permissions i give for that particular file so here i have tried to explain with an example this is the allow as i said and here the domain is cat here this is the type of the file so type of the file is cat chow and which is belonging to the class food and the permissions i give is to eat so here i have two different policies one is for the cat domain and the same is for dog domain whereas the type here will change dog chow and belonging to the class food and uh, the permission is eat if i don't define this policies what will happen i can allow the cat to eat dog food or i can allow the dog to eat cat food got it 
so this imagine these two are different types of files so this file can access or modify this particular file or either this dog file can access or modify this particular file i want cat to eat only cat food and i want dog to eat only dog food i want this file to only access and modify this particular class food and i want dog file to only modify and access this particular dog chow food type so in order to specify such things we will write policies and this policies will be applied based on the permissions we give we are we are giving only eat permissions okay so that is how it works this was a pictorial uh, example i wanted to give you all so with that we come to end of today's session and today's question is how to check the status of sc linux we use this command adb shell sc status to get the status of sc linux thanks everyone for watching i hope this information was clear and you all got an understanding of why we need to do sc linux labeling and what is the need of sc linux policies uh, i'll meet you all soon in my next session until then everyone take care bye see you soon